Hi guys and welcome. My name is Bill Simpson and I'm a professional tap teacher, performer and choreographer and the creator of the Just Tap series. And in this video, I'm going to teach you the two most important tap steps for any beginner to have in their tap toolbox. Now, it doesn't matter where you're from or what style of tap you'd like to do, the fundamentals are all the same. And don't worry if you don't have tap shoes. Let's just get straight into it and I'll tell you a bit more about these steps afterwards and why I feel they're so important. All right, so to start with, I want you to stand comfortably with your feet parallel and directly underneath your hips. Picture a straight line that runs from your shoulders down to your toes. If we just have a look for a sec, you can see that this is too wide and this is too narrow. We want our body weight to be right on top of the feet and we want to ensure that when we bend our knees, our knees bend over our toes. Okay, so if your feet are turned out, your knees bend turned out also in the direction of your toes. When you're bending your knees, you'll quickly find when they become too bent in that it will just become quite uncomfortable. Now, unless you're peg leg baits, there are virtually no straight legs in tap. Okay, you wanna keep your knees bent at all times. Now, before we start making noise, I want you to shake out your feet. Now, what we're aiming for here is to shake using the main quad muscles of the leg while relaxing the ankle muscles. We want our foot just to flop around at the end of our leg. Now this is actually harder than it seems and it may even feel a bit counterintuitive. If your ankles are tense, it's going to look like this. Focus on really letting these muscles go. The further you go on your tap journey, the more you'll see that the relaxed ankle is one of the key principles of tap. Okay, so the first of the two most important steps that we're going to look at is called a ball heel. It's also commonly called a toe heel or a step heel. Now the ball heel is made up of two individual beats called the ball dig and the heel drop. We're going to have a look at them now, one at a time, starting with the heel drop. So keeping our toes on the ground, we lift up the right heel and then drop it into the ground. We're then going to do the same thing on the other side and then start changing from side to side each time. Now the heel drop beat can be easily lost and is sometimes hard to achieve clearly. Remember to keep your knees bent, and the way I think of it is by picturing some imaginary resistance between your heel and the floor. So that's the heel drop. It's a great one to gradually take faster side to side. Now let's look at the ball dig. To begin, I want you to lift the leg up and forward, and then we step the ball of the foot into the ground right underneath our hips. Think of the ball digging. It stays in the ground and it doesn't lift up. Now when you ball dig, you want to put the weight onto the foot so that you can lift the other foot off and thus do the same beat on the other side and then repeat on the first side once again. So once we're going side to side, it's basically just walking on our toes on the spot. That's the ball dig. From here, we're going to put these two individual beats together to get the ball heel. We start with the ball dig and then simply add in the heel drop straight afterwards, then repeat on the other side. Also really think about stepping the weight onto the ball dig rather than holding the weight on the supporting leg. You wanna transfer the bulk of this weight straight away so that you can lift the other side ready to go. Now with this one, I'd recommend starting off slow and then gradually start speeding up over time. If you aim to get that little bit faster every day, you'll be surprised how soon you'll be able to do the step quickly. Now that we've covered the ball heel, the second of the two most important tap steps we're gonna to touch on is called the shuffle. Now I see the shuffle as a crucial bread and butter step in tap dance that forms a significant part of many, many steps and combinations. It's one of the easiest steps to get wrong, and it's crucial for any tap dancer to know and understand it. So the shuffle is made up of two brush beats, the brush forward and the brush back. Now, a little secret, even though we say brush forward and brush back, tap dance happens mostly using up and down movement rather than forward and backward movement. Let's look at the brush forward to begin with. We want to start by lifting our leg up and forward. We push our leg down, striking only the ball tap and continuing the momentum forward. While we do push the leg gently forward as it hits the ground, we certainly don't want this to swing out with a lot of unnecessary movement. Now the brush back is the exact opposite. We pull our legs slightly back, 
striking the ball tap once again and lifting the leg as we go. Now, if we imagine our toe tap covered in paint, we'd want each brush beat to look like a spot on the floor, not a streak or a stripe. We really want to strike the ball tap as we do each brush beat. Now, as a rule of thumb, the working leg should generally not push back past the supporting leg, as this is going to cause the leg to start swinging, which as we can see is not conducive for happy speeding up. This is one of the most common mistakes made when doing shuffles. So when we look at the step front on, the telltale sign is the knee. You want to see this moving up and down with every single shuffle you do. If the knee isn't moving up and down with the leg, the chances are that either the lower leg or the whole leg is swinging once again, resulting in a lot of unnecessary movement. Also, as I touched on already, it's really important to relax your ankle, especially as you start to take this step faster. The shuffle needs both the initial momentum that the quad muscles provide as you push the leg down and the freedom of movement that the loose ankle provides. Think of it like this, the leg does the work, the ankle just relaxes. So that's the shuffle. As I mentioned earlier, I feel the shuffle and the ball heel are the most useful and most important steps to work on when you're starting out. And I'll tell you why. It's because these two steps are the building blocks. And once you've got these safely in your tap toolbox, you'll see that they contain the potential for many more steps. The first and most obvious is called the shuffle ball heel. Feel free to have a try of this. It's exactly as it sounds. You do the ball heel straight after the shuffle and then you repeat on the other side. But further than that, the beats used within the ball heel and the shuffle are universal in tap dance. And by changing or adding more of these same beats or by taking beats away, we realize that we already understand the fundamentals for many more steps. So hopefully that's making sense so far and you feel like you're off to a great start. But if not, don't worry. This has been only a very brief introduction to these steps and it's meant to take a little time. In the full Just Tap Absolute Beginner course, we explore these steps and many others in a detailed yet super fun way. Over my years as a tap teacher, I've been constantly refining my teaching method, which I've carefully compiled into this course specifically for beginners. I've packed it with value and many simple secrets that I've learned along the way and have really set out to make tap as easy to learn as possible. Basically, it's the course I wish I had when I was starting out. Be sure to check it out at justtapdance.com. In any case, it's been great having you with me for this video. Please feel free to share this video around with anyone you'd like to. Tap dance is an endlessly enjoyable and rewarding pastime. Wherever your tap journey takes you from here, I strongly support your decision to learn tap dance and I truly hope you stick with it. All the very best and I wish you a great deal of tap happiness in the future. My name is Bill Simpson and this is Just Tap.